Hello and welcome to this edition of Windows Business Weekly. My name is Russell Smith and today I'm going to show you how to use Quick Assist in Windows 10 to support your remote users. So stay tuned. So it's been a few months since I've recorded uh, an issue of Windows Business Weekly. I think back in December was the last time. There have been several reasons for that. First is that I don't really have a proper studio and the gear to record properly. So trying to get the production values that I'm looking for in terms of sound and video means a lot of setup every time that I record one of these videos. So I'm hoping to try and change that situation over the next couple of months so that I can make more regular recordings for you, maybe once or twice a week even. The other thing was that I'm not really sure what the exact format of this podcast is going to be. First, I thought it was going to be more news orientated. Then I realized that people seem to be more interested in the how-to clips. But probably what I'm going to do is maybe record two episodes a week one with news about what's going on in the world of Windows and Microsoft, and then maybe a second clip like today with a how-to. And I'll keep them relatively short. The other thing is I was also thinking about changing the name of the channel from Windows Business Weekly to Microsoft 365 Business Weekly. But I'm going to leave the name of the channel as it is for now, but I am going to focus more on Microsoft 365, really because that's where it is. Now, of course, the last time I recorded an episode, we were living in a slightly different world. Everything has changed around us now because of the COVID-19 health issues around the world. And that means a lot more people are working from home. So I think the nature of these podcasts also needs to change a little bit to focus on things like remote working and Microsoft Teams and all of the good stuff that's in there with Microsoft 365. So over the next few weeks, I hope to kind of change the content to I'm not going to ignore Windows, of course, it's still important, but probably there'll be a lot more Microsoft 365 content from me as well. So I hope that over the next few weeks, there'll be more content, more content that's relevant to today's situation for you, and that gradually the production value of these videos will also increase. So let's talk a little bit about Quick Assist. So Quick Assist is a feature in Windows 10 that allows you to either give support to a remote user or to request support from somebody else. Now, you might remember remote assistance that was introduced in Windows XP and it was a little bit of a pain to use and it was considered to be fairly insecure as well. It was fairly easy to attack it. So lots of organizations disabled it. It wasn't very easy or reliable to use. But Quick Assist doesn't contain all of the features of remote assistant, but it probably contains enough features for you to to find it useful. Now, of course, a lot of organizations are using their own remote support support solutions. Maybe they're uh, working with things like uh, TeamViewer. Uh, But of course, you have to pay for that, whereas Quick Assist is free and it's built into Windows 10. And it allows you to basically share your screen, allow the person who's given you remote support to take full control if you want. And as a somebody requesting support, you have full control over uh, what the person can do, whether they can take control or just view your screen, for instance. And there are other features in there, like the ability to annotate the screen, to send text instructions, to restart a remote device to bring up the task manager for the end user so that you don't have to kind of walk them through the process of how to do that. Uh, It's fairly basic. Uh, There's no file transfer support at the moment, but nevertheless, it might work out well for many of you. So I'm going to go straight into a demo now and just show you the basics of how to establish a connection. The only real requirement is that Uh, one or the other of you, depending on who initiates the session, will need a Microsoft account in order to do it. And that's where all the security is established through verifying your identity through that account. So I'm going to switch over to my remote desktops now and I'll show you how all that works.
So here I am on my Windows 10 desktop and I'm going to start a session to help uh, a remote worker. So the first thing I need to do is to launch Quick Assist. So I'm going to find it through the search menu here and you can see there the Quick Assist app has appeared in the list of results. So I'm going to click here on Quick Assist. Just let that open up. Okay, I'm going to assist another person. So I'm going to click here, assist another person at the bottom of the window. And now I need to sign in with my Microsoft account. So I already have a Microsoft account. So I'm going to type in the email address for that account and then click next. You can see now it's connecting. Now I've already used this account with Quick Assist before and asked it to remember my credentials. So it didn't, in this instance, prompt me for a password for that account. But if you're using Quick Assist for the first time or you don't ask it to remember your credentials, then you will need to insert your Microsoft account password and maybe approve multi-factor authentication if you have that set up. But in this case, I don't need to do that. I'm straight in there. So now what you see is I have a security code which I need to pass to the person that I want to provide assistance to. And that code will expire, you can already see there, in nine minutes. So we need to set up this session before it expires. So now I'm going to switch to another desktop. So I'm going to pretend to be the remote user that I'm trying to support. So just give me one second to do that. So here I am, my user in distress who needs support, and the user is going to open up Quick Assist. So I'm going to open up Quick Assist in the same way that I did on my own PC. And now I need to put in that code from the assistant. So I'm going to actually go back to the other PC, and I'm going to copy that code out. You can see here I have copy to clipboard. So I'm going to switch back again and I'm going to paste that code. Of course, I would just tell, tell the user the code via email or over the phone or whatever. I'm going to paste that code into code from assistant and I'm going to click there, share screen. So now I need to go back to my PC and you see here I have two options. So I can either opt to take full control of the remote user's desktop or just to view the screen. Now in this instance I want to take full control. So I'm going to keep full control selected and click continue. Okay, but now I need to go back to the remote user and you can see there's information here about who is trying to connect to my PC what they're trying to do. So in this case, they want to have full control and I want to allow them to do this. So I'm gonna click here, allow. That'll just take a few seconds to connect. And you can see the quick assist at the top of the screen and it says that screen sharing is on. And I have the option to pause that at any time if I want. So now if I go back to my PC, and you can see now that I can see the remote user's desktop. You can see their notepad is open on their desktop and they're having some kind of problem. And because I took full control, I can obviously now do whatever I want here and the user can see what I'm doing. I can even type into there and do whatever I want to help that person. Now there are several options that you can see across the top of the screen here. I'm just gonna expand them so you can see what they all do. So if we're in a multi-monitor setup, we can change the monitor. We can also annotate the screen, so basically draw on top of it. Maybe we want to point to something to help the user out. We can swap the screen so that we see the screen in full size. Uh, I'm not gonna do that now, but you can do that if you want. Toggle instruction channel, it's a bit confusing what that means, but basically what it allows you to do is to switch on this box where you send text instructions to the user. For instance, if you're not able to call them for, for whatever reason. So I could say, uh, click the start menu for instance, and then I can press send. And then the user will receive that in their instruction channel on their end. So if I'm able to flip back 
to the other desktop. Let's just try that. And you can see now a red uh, indicator has appeared there on the instruction channel icon. If I click that, you can see there that the end user has received that message. So back on my PC, so obviously the instruction channel also allows the end user to type something back to the person who's given support. And I can just toggle that on and off. Just expand that again. So you've got the option as well here to restart the remote computer. Obviously, I'm not going to show you that. Uh, you've also got the option to bring up the task manager on the remote computer. And you can see now there that the task manager has opened. Uh, I can click there more details and have a look to see what's going on to maybe help the user. And that's really useful. You don't have to kind of talk the user through how to do that. You can also pause a session and of course you've got the option to end the session which either I can do or the uh, user being supported can also do. So you can see there that it's fairly basic but it's really easy to get it up and working and you don't have the problems with firewalls or anything like that because it works behind network address translation which of course is a natted router if you like so that's how most people are working at home these days. So there's no issues with that either. As I said, that just one or the other, whoever's requesting support or, who, or whoever is giving support needs a Microsoft account. That's really the only requirement. And both devices must, must be run in Windows 10. This is not supported on Windows 7, Windows 8 or anything like that. So that's Quick Assist on how it works in Windows 10. So that might be something really useful now if your organization has lots of employees working from home. That's it from me for now. Maybe there'll be another episode this week. If not, I hope that next week I'll have some more useful tips and tricks about how to work with Windows and Microsoft 365. So see you then.